We need to understand that the caravan is made up of people fleeing an untenable situation. Extreme poverty and violence, both from gangs and the police. This situation has been caused by years of extractive and destructive U.S. policy, political interference, and economic exploitation. Our original initiative rapidly got all tangled up in the sale of arms, and the sale of arms got tangled up with hostages. Since the political instability of the 80s and the terror of Reagan's CIA-trained Contra death squads, political repression, persecution, and disappearances throughout Central America have increased exponentially. These effects have only been magnified by the Trump administration's inhumane doubling down on existing U.S. immigration policies. U.S. aid to Honduras funds a corrupt military and maintains an illegitimate government against the wishes of the people. Aid money directly supports industry and militarization, not social welfare. The last two presidential elections faced widespread allegations of fraud, but were upheld as legitimate by the U.S. State Department. Local attempts to alleviate the economic plight of Honduras have been quashed by the U.S.-backed U.N. In 2009, left-leaning President Manuel Zelaya was removed by the military and forced into exile. The coup was widely condemned, but a Clinton-led U.S. team worked behind the scenes to stall military and economic efforts by neighboring countries to restore Zelaya to office. Access to land is very limited, and the majority of arable land is owned by huge farming conglomerates like Dole and other U.S. corporations or the rich. Dole Fresh Fruit selects the best growing locations worldwide to produce the highest quality bananas and pineapples for our kush kush. The indigenous Garifuna and Mosquito communities are especially affected by this, as laws give protections and priority to non-indigenous land claims. Global Witness, a watchdog group, describes Honduras as the deadliest country on earth for environmental activists, who are assassinated with impunity for standing up to corporate land grabs. The people who comprise this exodus are refugees. They come seeking asylum some as political dissidents, some as victims of domestic violence or gang and police persecution. They are poor, and many are children, or are traveling with children. Honduras has hosted at least seven U.S. military bases, from which the U.S. School of the Americas has trained death squads to fight communist movements across the region. 66% of Hondurans live in poverty. Due to privatization of infrastructure, Electricity costs $100 to $150 per month. Honduran workers make an average of $420 a month, which is barely enough to buy food for a family of four, let alone pay for rent or medical care or transportation. Support Pueblo Sin Fronteras. They are traveling with the group and helping them to self-organize. They are also helping people connect with legal aid at the border. Spread information about the caravan and the conditions in Honduras. There is a lot of harmful rhetoric being deployed against these people. Sinclair Broadcasting Group, the right-wing media giant and largest television station owner in the U.S., forced its nearly 200 local news networks to air a defense of Border Patrol agents tear-gassing asylum seekers. Please do what you can to counteract it. Border militarization has recently led to three separate instances of people dying while imprisoned by Border Patrol agents, including children as young as seven years old. If you'd like to participate or host your own event, please follow these organizations on Facebook or contact Portland Assembly for more information.